I'll advise that this council meeting will be uh, streamed live to the City of Adelaide website and a recording will also be published to the internet. Please note that an audio visual recording is being taken of the meeting and this means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transfer outside of Australia. Uh, members, at the opening, uh, we will acknowledge country. So council acknowledges that we're meeting on traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Um, I have nil apologies or leave of absence, uh, though I've noted that Councillor Donovan will be late. Uh, we have one report this evening, uh, which is the COVID-19 uh, update and impacts uh, with two recommendations. Um, I was just going to check whether we might, um, unless you have any objections, just suspend uh, the operation of the meeting procedures to have a short uh, 10 to 15 minute informal discussion in case there's any questions or discussion that's needed before we go into formal for this report. Um, I will just ask for a show of hands if everybody is happy, comfortable to go into informal for a short while. Yep, great. Thank you, members. So um, I'll advise when the formal meetings apply again. Um, so, uh, members, I'll open it up uh, for questions. I'll ask you to elect use electronic hands. I did see Councillor Martin's hand go up, but I will ask for electronic hands so that we can follow that. Um, Councillor Martin, over to you. Um, yeah, look, uh, a request and a couple of questions. Um, the request is, uh, to you, Lord Mayor, and to the administration. Um, uh, I appreciate that there is much in the agenda that uh, makes public information um, to assist the community and understanding Council's position. However, there is much that is not. There is information that was provided to uh, members of uh, Council uh, in a confidential briefing. Um, there was information provided to the audit committee confidentially uh, and it related to specific projects uh, and there is no mention of that in the documentation. Many of those projects that were mentioned have either been cancelled or suspended and I'm not saying which ones but it, it is very difficult um, to expect the community to understand the, the nature and the extent of this problem if they don't understand that projects that are dear to their hearts have been suspended, cancelled, postponed or whatever. Uh, and so part of the business of helping everyone to understand this circumstance is that we have complete honesty about our actions. Uh, and there is no, uh, no criticism uh, that can be made of us then if the information is out there in the public realm. And from a personal point of view, uh, I find it very difficult if things have been cancelled and suspended that uh, I may well end up talking about things which actually aren't in the public realm. So it would be really good if we could just have that honesty and openness with members of the community. Um, I'm happy if you want to respond to that. I've I just have a statement or a question. Would you like a response? I'll ask, ask the CEO to respond. Sure. Um, I think Claire would also like to speak. So I'll, I'll go to the CEO and then to uh, Claire. Oh, sorry, Mark, one moment. My, my apologies. It's not unmuting. Can you unmute the CEO? Sorry, Mark, it's just not unmuting for us. Do you want me to try from here? There you go. Right. Okay, thanks. Um, thanks, Lord Mayor. The, um, the intention, as, as Council would know, was to provide you with early notice of our status and, and the projects that we're looking to either defer or, or move on towards next year. 
Um, the intention would be to report to you in detail um, in open agenda on the 12th of next month. Um, and that, that was the anticipated approach we would take. But I'm happy to take um, some further comments from Claire. Thanks. There you go, Claire. Yes, thank you. Um, and Councillor Martin, I absolutely um, agree that um, it's really important that the community understands what's stopped, what's paused and what's retimed. And through our QF reports, we always report each individual project that Council signs off on, whether that's capital or strategic. Um, and we are obviously also show that through our business plan and budget. Um, so normally at QFs you see about 20 slides and a lot of those are individual projects with updates on uh, where the projects are at and what's happening with them. So on the 5th um, through the committee, you will get to see all that detail. The challenge is that it was still moving um, as of Friday and yesterday. So I felt that it was best to wait until we actually drew a line in the sand to present it all as part of QF as we would normally do in full transparent and open um, agenda. So you will see that. And it has changed since we last to last Wednesday. Thank you, Director. I've, uh, I've got um, Rob Sims. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, and look, thank you um, to administration for uh, the report and for putting this information um, into the public realm. I think it's really important that we do that as a way of um, having an honest conversation with the community about some of the challenges that we face. I note the reference um, in the report regarding um, operations and staffing. I'm just wondering if we can get a bit of advice on going forward, how some of those decisions are going to be made, and in particular, um, how council will be engaged in the discussions in terms of determining, you know, what, what, serve, what that might mean for service delivery going forward. Not going. Um, sorry, I'm having difficulty unmuting. Oh, I can mute myself, Lord Mayor. No, 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 you're good. I'm just trying to get to the CEO or to Claire and neither of them, as long as we're not pressing them at the same time. You should take up the offer for me to mute myself, Lord Mayor. It doesn't oh, yeah, happen. Thank, thank you, thank you, Councillor That's very kind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So neither Jenny or I seem to be able to unmute the CEO. Um, uh, I'm not sure what's going on. I'll try to. Okay. Well, I'm good. <laughs> Thanks, Franz. <laughs> um, CEO, can you try and unmute yourself from where you're sitting to see if that works? I'll unmute everybody. Yes. Yeah. No, those, they didn't unmute. Oh, so, Claire, you've unmuted. Mm -hmm. um, I thought perhaps Mark might want to speak on this one. So, Mark, uh, are you just you're not able to? Or? I mean, there I, you go. Oh, okay. There you go. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Pressing the same button. But there you go. Um, look, there's absolutely no doubt that we, um, we have a journey to take regarding reducing our, our operational expenditure. And uh, we as an executive will be coming to you as a council as we, as we can with some, um, some opportunities to consider. Certainly there's something in particular we need to talk about and that is our service levels. And so, you know, we've done previously done a fair bit of work on, on developing our service level um, um, document. Uh, that is a good basis for us to, to work to. Uh, we'll be coming to you uh, with some suggested ideas and some suggested opportunities to adjust those service levels and the consequent resourcing of that. So um, I just want to reassure you as a council group that um, we would intend to come to you with a detailed plan of how, we, um, how we'll go forward. That's just going to take us a little bit of time as an executive to pull together and there's some work we're currently undertaking. But um, Claire, you may want to add to that as well. Thanks. Oh, 
Yes, I'm unmuted. Um, the only thing I'd probably add, Councillor Sims, is that we've actually seen a change in demand for some of our services. And I think as Clinton um, talked you through last week, it's really important that we understand what that demand looks like and how sustainable some of those demands are. So um, as Mark's indicated, we would absolutely do this in conjunction with Council. Um, we wouldn't um, reduce or stop services or introduce new ones without um, Council having a full understanding of what that means for the community. Community. But the demand side is really important. So the more data that we have, the better informed we'll be able to be in terms of um, what will be needed. So um, absolutely, we will be engaging with council um, every step of the way on, on, on service delivery and service requirements. Mm -hmm. Unmute myself. Welcome, Councillor Donovan. Uh, now, I had Councillor Martin, you had another question, followed by Deputy Lord Mayor, founded by Councillor Moran. Um, Councillor Sims asked it, so I'm happy with that. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. I just wanted to echo some of those sentiments the other councillors have had. Um, uh, I think you know, we're the decision making body here and the administration are doing some excellent work around uh, modelling different scenarios and what have you. But I think we need to make it very clear that we would like to see that um, and we would like to be the ones making the call on that. Um, and I think later this, this meeting, uh, which has just been suspended, which we're about to pick up, um, we'll have the opportunity uh, to make that very clear. Um, I absolutely echo some of the other sentiments that, uh, look, while we're in a crisis situation, the administration has been taking it upon themselves to do an excellent um, amount of work. But at the end of the day, we're the ones that need to be making the calls on it. Um, uh, whether it's issues around um, uh, cash flow because of rate deferrals or um, operational uh, deficits and what have you and, and which projects uh, get the tick and which ones need to be pushed back a little bit further so that we don't um, uh, so that we don't spend too much money and remain financially sustainable so I just yeah totally echo those sentiments thank you uh, councillor councillor Moran oh yes thank you Lord Mayor um, as uh, we're talking about South Australia and specifically the city. Um, it sounds like um, the. Can you hear me, Ora? Right? Yes. Um, it sounds like that that we will be hit less hard than the rest of the world. Um, so, as the catastrophe seems to be ending quite quickly, um, and our meetings are so far apart, um, what it seems to be planning for the downturn, but very quickly, um, elective surgery at the hospitals at the Royal Adelaide and the hospitals in the city are all returning. Law firms are sending their, um, their lawyers back to work, possibly as early as next week. So is, is, this, is this too draconian or have we already lost the money? Uh, I'll... Councillor Moran, you I've unmuted you, uh, CEO, and I'll unmute you as well, Claire, if I can. Thank you, Councillor Van. Yeah, thanks, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, as we discussed at the last meeting of Council, um, we have, in fact, experienced a reduction in our income um, that has been reflected in this quarter. Um, I understand and, and, and appreciate the fact that things are looking much more optimistic from a community opening back up um, perspective, and that is really good. Um, however, that's going to be quite modest from a, from a city operations perspective. Um, under normal circumstances, we would have a significant visitation um, from interstate and overseas. We would have international students, etc. And so even if we as a, as a state and as a city do return to some normal um, activity, it's going to be at the lower level rather than complete. So we expect that there will be impacts in both quarters, the current quarter we're in and the next quarter. Um, that is what's being predicted in a number of other states as well. And some of the, the larger states like, um, or cities like Sydney and Melbourne are anticipating a little bit further than that. So uh, they're expecting a hit for two to three quarters. I'd expect that one to two quarters will be what we'll be looking at. And yeah, just to repeat, um, we have experienced the loss of income in this current quarter, and I expect that will continue to a degree, a significant degree into the next quarter. Claire, did you want to add anything to that? Uh, yes, thanks, Karen. 
bounce them around. What we will provide you with next week is the actuals as well as the predicted um, revenue losses. So um, I think I mentioned last week that our on-street parking, our uh, paid on-street parking is down uh, 20, um, sorry, down to 25%, which means we've lost lost 75%. So that's actually quite a substantial amount of revenues. But I'll, um, I'll be able to give you more accurate and up-to-date information around the actual amount of lost revenue is what we, um, what we had budgeted this quarter. Um, so I can do that for the, for the QF uh, report. Um, Councillor Moran, I took you off mute, so you can continue. Oh, look, I understand that. So it sounds like we've, we've, we're budgeting now for money that we've already lost rather than money that we have, because we can't really use the Eastern Seaboard as a, um, as a to follow them, because they will be shutting down further. They're still getting an increase. There were 28 uh, increases in Australia today, which is very low, but, uh, but, a, but South Australia, as the Northern Territory is, I think is a separate case. And I would like to, uh, I agree with, um, you know, the tightening of the belt and all that, um, but I'd like to see us, starting to talk about how we turbocharge um, our economy in the very near future when things probably in the city, uh, North Adelaide return to normal uh, rather than planning for an austerity measure that'll last several months, which might only be needed for several weeks. Um, I might be wrong, there might be a second surge, but at the moment it's looking pretty, pretty good and we might be business back as usual, as usual, business as usual in a couple of weeks. Um, and we're not having another meeting for, for a long time. Uh, we've got a meeting in two, well, the committee's in two weeks and, and council after that. Um, Councillor Moran, I know that the, the, um, uh, the executive have been working on um, the current financial losses so that we understand what the impact is this quarter. Plus there's been um, the uh, continual sort of discussion around hardship policy and deferral rates. So we know the impact's going to go into the next quarter as well. And possibly after that, there are the scenarios that we're looking at. Um, and also, I think we touched on it last week, that the next piece of work that will come into us is, is that recovery work, is actually, you know, what is the plan for recovery and what are we going to, you know, how are we going to try and get everybody quickly, swiftly back up and running? Understand. So when will we start looking at the recovery? So I will go to the CEO for the timing. Yeah, it's really all there. Um, we are already doing some, some significant work in that space. Um, I expect that we'll be coming to you very soon with what our, what our forward approach will be. So um, it will be a matter of um, two to three weeks. I would like to think that we'll start to come to you with some good conceptual kind of works going forward. Um, one of the things is that um, when we do come about reimagining and, and really working purposefully with the state and the federal government coming out of this period, we're going to need to be very strong and well positioned. So we've got to get our resourcing correct so that when we, when the time is right, we can do some really good work and really purposeful work um, that will really impact positively on the community. So it's certainly top of mind and it's something that the executive is working on right now. Uh, members, sorry, Councillor Moran, sorry, I've, I've unmuted you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I can hear what you're saying, but in three weeks' time, if we start reimagining it, it's a bit late, isn't it? If everything goes according to plan now, we, South Australia, and I'm going to talk about us, will be out of the pandemic and we're starting to reimagine the recovery. I would like our recovery to be, hopefully our restaurants are open, uh, people have gone back to work um, and we're still imagining the recovery. I'd, I'd like to have that much sooner um, in the next week or two, if that's possible. But that's all I've got to say on that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wren. I, you know, I do know that attention, a lot of attention is being paid to it. Um, and uh, it's also part of the work is understanding what the order of the recovery is. So it's, it's unfortunately, it's not going to be all doors are open. So there's going to be a staged recovery and some of the restrictions will still be in place for a while. Um, members, I don't see any other hands. So what I might do in that case, um, we'll go back into formal procedure uh, if everybody's good with that. And I will go to the report. There is one report uh, 
which is 3.1, and I will look for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, and a second, thank you, Councillor Canole. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Uh, yes, I just have um, an alternative motion, I guess it is, which adds a point at three, um, which I did circulate to the business team earlier, but I can read it out if- One minute, thank you. Um, that came through just, just before. We started, so I just um, read it out if it's easier. Um, I'm just waiting for Jenny Dylan, so I won't be a second. No, okay. Oh, there it is. So I hope everybody can see that. It's a, it's a point three. Uh, DLM, would you like to read that out? Just make sure everybody can see it. Uh, yes, and there's just, um, there's just a couple of words missing. Request that the CEO report to the council outlining options on how council can achieve a $20 million reduction in operating expenditure during the 2020-2021 financial year. Thank you. Uh, you have a seconder in Councillor Canole, so if you'd like to speak to it. Yeah, with pleasure. Um, uh, so I guess, colleagues, this um, uh, basically captures the concerns that um, all of us pretty well outlined uh, just before in the informal briefing, and that's that we don't want to see the administration taking it upon themselves to make the decisions around what's in and what's out and what's above the line and what's below the line and what's getting delayed and, and what have you. Um, uh, that's very much a decision I think council has to make. Um, by all means, they can bring us options and various ideas around how they think they'll meet those uh, uh, targets to make sure we're financially sustainable. But ultimately, it's really up to us um, uh, to make that decision. So um, uh, putting this motion in there makes it very clear that this is all these various options are coming back to us. Um, uh, and it's not just uh, at point two, we're talking about um, the critical decision making in the context of, well, I was just worried that that, that would be um, too much, um, a bridge too far. And so this uh, brings it back to us and, and, and gives us um, a clarity over exactly what um, we're allowing uh, to occur. I think the administration in, um, in asking questions to them offline, as I have been, um, have got uh, a lot of good ideas around how to achieve this, um, uh, but ultimately it still needs to come back to us. Um, uh, just to Councillor Moran's point uh, earlier, I would say um, this, this work and these options do actually need to speak to the reimagining work. Um, uh, they do need to uh, speak to what we want the city to look like and, and they do need to make allowances for and speak to what the recovery is going to look like and what areas we're going to focus on in the recovery. So I think, uh, for example, the work that Ian um, Hill is leading um, is incredibly important. Uh, in that regard uh, as well. And it needs to be, this $20 million reduction in operating expenditure needs to be read um, against that. So this is about living within our means. It's about making sure council makes the decision. And it's also about making sure we make the decision in the context of where we're gonna be going over the next two, three, four months. And uh, I suppose where we wanna take the city thereafter. Thank you. Councillor Knoll, did you wish to speak? Reserve. Reserve, you're right. Uh, thank you. I have Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin. Um, yes, I wish to move uh, an amendment, Lord Mayor. Do you have an amendment or is there? No? Yes, Councillor Martin. Uh, now, look, I, I'm writing this as we speak, um, so um, I'll take it slowly. Um, one as is. Um, two um, becomes three, and I'll give you a new two, uh, and the three, or what is now four, goes. Um, and then two would be amends so much of standing orders as necessary. Um, to reinstate the finance committee 
of council to meet on the fourth Tuesday, um, uh, fourth Tuesday of each month, I guess. Um, um, uh, next sentence, the role of the committee, of the finance committee will be um, to one, uh, so colon then one, uh, consider strategies for assisting the city of Adelaide to manage its response uh, to the financial impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, yeah, now that that is not uh, th th three, that is actually one, or you can make it, you know, the little tiny Roman numeral one. We'll get we'll get to the formatting. We're just trying to grab the um. Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, and then uh, to allow the presentation and consideration of expert opinion from business and other stakeholders. Um, and I'll make a full stop there. And then a, a new uh, uh, sentence, but it's the same same uh, paragraph. Um, uh, uh, furthermore, Colin, um, and then I'd make it A, all members of the elected body will be eligible to attend. And then B, um, the first meeting of the Finance Committee on, hang on, I'll just get the date, um, on April 28th, um, we'll elect a chair and a deputy chair comma, for which there will be no remuneration. Uh, C, uh, the meeting agenda will be determined by the committee at its first meeting and thereafter in consultation with the administration. And then D, and this is the last bit, um, the committee will have. Sorry, uh, just a moment. And oh, thereafter, in consultation with the administration. And just the last point um, uh, the committee will have the power to formulate and vote on recommendations to be put to council. Sorry, Councillor Martin, the power to vote, uh, was it? To vote yeah. and put recommendations formulate, to... Formulate and vote on recommendations to be put to council. Now, let me just have a look. I think that's it. Um, uh, oh, I suppose, look, we could lose furthermore at um, the end of 2.2 and then just make everything that follows go on as 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6. That works for me. Uh, I have a seconder in Councillor Sims. Okay. So, uh, do you want me to read that or? 
I think everybody's actually read that as you've been dictating. Okay. Um, now, look, uh, Lord Mayor, um, I just want to say that um, uh, we've formulated some responses uh, to this pandemic, but uh, clearly we don't know um, what the response needs to be because we don't know the severity of it. And in fact, um, it, it was suggested a moment ago that we need to find savings of $20 million. It may well be if this pandemic goes longer, it will be more. If it goes less, um, it may be less. Um, we just don't know, except that we do know that it's, uh, it's a sufficiently serious uh, economic event for the oil price to collapse to the point where oil is now worth nothing, um, that uh, Virgin Airlines have collapsed, and locally um, many sectors are in dire straits. And in fact, um, I was speaking to one hotelier today um, who was saying that 30% of their business in Adelaide comes from international travellers. Their break-even point is 67% uh, occupancy. So um, with even 70% occupancy, and at the moment there is no occupancy, um, they would be in serious trouble. And there's no chance of international travel resuming in the short term. Um, uh, so it, look, it is serious. And I, I must say uh, one of the actions of you, Lord Mayor, and uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor in reforming the uh, committee structure was that previously we had a very sophisticated committee structure with a, uh, a finance committee, particularly looking at matters pertaining just to finance. And so it was able very quickly to deal with matters of importance related to the financial activities of council. And God, if we ever needed a body to be looking at the financial arrangements of council right now, a finance committee, um, it is at this very moment and in the weeks ahead. Now, um, if you look at the agenda that the administration has brought to us, you'll see that it's proposing uh, in three weeks from now to bring to us uh, a report, which goes to committee first, by the way, mm -hmm. but there's no voting at committee. Uh, the first chance people have a, uh, an opportunity to, to say how they're voting and what they might vote on comes on uh, May 12th, three weeks away, as uh, Councillor Moran was saying. Um, and, and there won't be any opportunity between now and then, because we don't allow people to make presentations except at council meetings, for anyone, for any business leader, um, someone like Business SA, for any economist, um, for any individual business person to come to us and say, look, this is what I think you should be doing as a council. Well, that, that is one of the flaws in what we're doing. That is to say that our whole response is being managed by the administration, no doubt in consultation with you, Lord Mayor, I have no, no doubt about that, um, and from an occasional shoot from the, um, uh, the HIP uh, recommendation asking for savings of $20 million. What I'm proposing is that we need something... May I have a minute longer, Lord Mayor? You may, Councillor. Thank you. Um, what I'm proposing is that instead of basically uh, leaving just one stream of uh, um, uh, opinion um, to emerge for the Council to consider, even though there may well be the opportunity to amend, we open ourselves to a range of expressions of uh, uh, the way people think we should deal with this. Uh, and I'm asking for expert opinion. And then as a consequence of that, uh, we can, uh, as a committee, um, with a chair, properly constituted, uh, operating under the rules of standing orders, uh, present to the council a recommendation, which is informed also uh, by the administration, as it always was when it existed previously. Now, look, uh, these are uh, extraordinary times, and this is uh, perhaps an extraordinary measure. I know we've abolished that capacity to hear from different people, to formulate different views, but I'm suggesting now is the time when we need to be very inclusive, when we should be considering every option that people put to us 
uh, in working out what our response is to be. And, and that, that role may be there for a month, it may be there for six months, it may be there for 12 months, but it allows detailed consideration of our financial circumstances uh, by a committee with only one subject on the agenda, just our financial response to the pandemic, considering the views of others. Now, look, I, I ask members, please endorse this um, in a non-partisan fashion. I am putting it in a non-partisan way as a means of helping us all come to the right conclusions at the other side of this. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I'm very uh, supportive of this. I think it's consistent with the approach that has been taken by state and uh, our state government and has been advocated in the federal parliament as well. And that is ensuring that you have a, a committee which is in effect a COVID-19 committee that looks at the implications of this pandemic and um, it provides advice to administration and talks through the implications out of session. And I like the fact that Councillor Martin has kept this open. That means that any elected member who is interested can come along and participate in the committee. Some may choose to do so regularly. Others may choose to um, come in and out of the committee uh, when uh, there's an issue that interests them. But I think when we're facing a situation like the one that we are facing, which is totally unprecedented, we need to ensure that there is maximum accountability maximum uh, accountability, maximum input from the community and maximum oversight um, from the elected body. And it's during these times of crisis that I think democratic structures are really, really important. And something like this, which, which provides um, an opportunity for elected members to have more direct input into the response, I think is, um, is really critical. So. I'm supportive of this. I don't think it's a, a political thing at all. As I say, it's um, an approach that's been taken within other levels of government. Um, and um, the fact that it's open to any member means that um, there'll be representation of the different views that we have around the council table within the committee, and also the capacity to bring in um, key stakeholders from outside to give suggestions on um, the approach that we take. So I think this is very sensible. I feel much more comfortable uh, with this rather than saying to administration, make savings of $20 million and come back to us. I mean, that's a very big ask. Let's instead work in partnership with our administration to deal with this and uh, feed in the views of the community as we do so. Thank you. I, I count the director, sorry, deputy CEO, Mokla had a question. Whoops, there we go. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Sorry, Councillor Martin, if I could just um, ask you, were you looking for a formal subcommittee um, of council similar to the subcommittees we've had in the past, which have looked at budget, or were, were you looking for more of the informal CEO working group, which also exists in the past, which looked after our budgets and finances, or were you looking for a core committee of council? Sort of which, which construct were you? Where you are, please. Um, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, in uh, the first line, I, I had hoped uh, that set it up, but do I need to make that more particular? Uh, amends so much of standing orders as necessary to reinstate the Finance Committee of Council? The. Uh, who, no, sorry, Claire, you're muted. No. So, 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 which, to... so which finance committee? Was it the budget subcommittee? Was it the budget core committee? Or was it the CEO working group? We've had, in my um, sort of years so here, we've had three different constructs. So I'm not sure which sure. finance committee you're referring to. So that's I, what I was trying to I'm, I'm referring to the finance committee that was abolished along with the other three standing committees when the committee structure was reformed. Oh, sorry, I just lost Claire. Hang on. Uh, apologies. Sorry, I'll just do this. Sorry, Claire. There we go. Um, Councillor yeah. Martin, I think what... I think that uh, was back in 2014, was it? So it was. The 2014 model. Yeah, okay. Yep. 
So it wasn't in relation. No. Uh, sorry to current yeah changes but, to governance. So that was the one that was actually for Stephen Yarwood's term. That's right. Uh, that was changed yeah. in the, at the beginning of uh, uh, Martin Hazy's term. Yeah. Um, and then uh, no. all, all members were members of the committees. Yeah. Uh, correct. Correct. And that committee operated uh, in. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, sorry, I can hear you, Councillor Martin. Okay, and that committee operated for much of the term of Martin Hazy. Um, I was a member of it, and I think the full title was Finance and Audit Committee, to be honest. Okay, I will, sorry, Claire, you, uh, I'm not muting you. I don't know why it keeps, you keep getting muted, but, um, and it's not unmuting now. So there we go. Yep. Um, yeah, so the the um, the budget, sorry, I think the one Councillor Martin's referring to is the budget subcommittee or the, um, that we had under Stephen Yarwood's term, which was specifically established to oversee um, budget and expenditure. Um, the finance and business services committee that we had. That's it, yeah. Yes, yeah. So that was um, aligned to the strategic plan. So we had an economic and community services committee of finance and business services committee. Oh, and two others. Yeah, strategic planning and um, I think it's partnerships committee. Yeah. Well, look, would it, would it help? That's okay. We can I, I'll get your intent and I'm sure we can um, come back to you with a model um, that um, meets your needs. So thank what, you. Would, would it assist the administration to understand it if I uh, took out the word reinstate and adds to create a finance committee of council. That is it. That is nodding. Uh, yes. Um, Rudy, did you want to make comment? Yes. Sorry, I'll just. There you go, Rudy. Good evening, members. Can um, I take out the word reinstate and put just, in. Just uh, to create? clarify um, what Councillor Martin is referring to is a section 41 uh, committee under the uh, Local Government Act. So. It is a, a change to our governance structure more than a change to the standing orders. Um, so that would be a committee that's established by council to assist council in the performance of its functions. And so the committee that uh, was referred to before by Claire was indeed such a section 41 committee, which is indeed different than a CEO working group, which is advisory to the CEO. Right. I will keep going. I have Councillor Moran and then Councillor Abraham today, then Councillor Canal. Councillor Moran, I'm just unmuting you. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, yes, the Finance Committee was very. I can't uh, hear you, Councillor. Now? Oh. I'm unmuted. Yep, got you. It was a very useful committee for nimble financial decisions. I think the one that I remember that uh, Sam took over from me as chair of it, um, it wasn't a subcommittee, it was a, a committee of council. Uh, the danger of having a subcommittee is that um, Team Adelaide will monopolise that, as it has every other, every other um, body, um, and that would, be a, um, that, that would make me very uncomfortable. Uh, so I would like it to be a committee of all members, um, perhaps mm -hmm. A smaller forum if people weren't interested and didn't uh, come, uh, that would be fine, but I think it should be open to all members. This is uh, going back to very good governance, and certainly this is a timely, um, a timely move on the council's part. Um, it opens it up to allow us to hear from business people and it opens it up for the council to steer, and I think that's probably what. Councillor Hyde was aiming for, and in his words rather than his motion, that we take uh, carriage of this in these dark times so that it takes the pressure off. So we work together with the administration in these unusual times. Um, I think the Finance Committee, as I said, was, a, was a, a very good committee of council and very necessary. And I urge you to support this motion. Thank you, Councillor Moran. I have Councillor Abraham today. One moment. There we go. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, just very quickly, I, I won't be supporting this um, for, uh, for for a couple of reasons. 
One is that uh, this is essentially a slap in the face or, or maybe even a, a brick in the face. I think so far our uh, council administration have done a wonderful job uh, managing the organisation. They've been very proactive. Um, uh, they've been on the front foot. Uh, they've kept us informed. Uh, and, uh, and to be quite honest, when I look at this, I, um, I just see extra bureaucracy and extra obstacles at a time where our residents, uh, our businesses, our ratepayers want us to be proactive, want us to be nimble and agile, what we're doing is uh, creating extra hurdles and, uh, and extra things for us to, to jump over and for us to maneuver around. Uh, I, I personally, I'm, I'm not going to support this and, and I urge all the other members not to support it either. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Moran, we've lost you. Um, I will go to Councillor Knoll. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I also have feel very similar to Councillor Abraham today in that our administra administration team is charged with looking after the, the, the financial well, uh, well-being, et cetera, of the organisation. They have the facts and figures at hand. They have the intimate knowledge of uh, what, the what the the actual council is doing. So Martin's disappeared too. Well, and it, it is, uh, it's quite, if you think about trying to put another committee on top of that, uh, I see this not as nimble. I see this as slowing down the responses they need to make. I mean, two months ago, we were nowhere near this, but we need to be, we need to be quick. So I consider that well, this only slows the, uh, the administration down. Two, we do make the decisions. We will see it often enough. I mean, I, I don't know the organisation that well that I can, that I can balance uh, the you know the various uh, services that we're delivering, and also make a good decision to balance what we're going to be able to offer. I mean, um, you know, so and they're the ones they're literally creating the data as they're filtering it through, and they're having to adjust day by day. I mean, uh, at what point does a committee that then has to formally meet and uh, and all of that to, uh, uh, is, is it going to be able to actually absorb? All the various uh, fineries uh, that are required, and we talk about that. We have got the growth uh, uh, department, etc., that are really uh, are looking at how we're going to take whatever resources we have. I mean, this will be a slow pullout of the of the economy, and uh, we will be able to adapt as we go forward. But it is across the areas that we see that are, are not performing as well. I mean, and if, if the administration needed any advice. Well, that's always able to be, to be gotten. That is specific to the needs they have. I mean, I don't know of any business person that has a, a clear understanding of how a council runs with all of its uh, finance versus its social uh, interactions and obligations. So I think it's very important that one, we allow them to deliver to us the information. Uh, they give us the various options because every time you make any decision, there is a negative uh, outcome in another space that you need to consider and you need to say what values and that we have. And, uh, and then we need to be able to sit there on behalf of the community, generally say, okay, this is, uh, these are the outcomes that we uh, consider on behalf of our, of our ratepayers and uh, will be the, 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 least, the least difficult for us because we still have to deliver all of the core uh, services, et cetera. And we have, I think, a really good administration that should be allowed to do its job and give us all the data or all the information that they uh, have with, with the, uh, the various scenarios that they want to provide so that we can make a good, clear decision. But they've got to do this a lot quicker than a, media, uh, than a committee that has little understanding and needs to be brought up to speed, which means that all of our best brains are trying to fill our heads with what they know, and they should be bringing us what they understand and give us the opportunity to be able to make uh, uh, clear decisions uh, with a clear understandings of the various ramifications of each of our decisions. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Obviously, I can't support this. Um, it's a committee of a committee of a council. Um, it is incredibly bureaucratic. Um, it is composed of exactly the same people that are on the committee, exactly the same people that are on the council. Um, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if the CEO holds another briefing um, on this matter before it comes to council as well to maximise the opportunity for members to have their say. 
Um, I do think it's bureaucratic and I think it's a distraction, quite frankly, from the critical work um, that needs to be undertaken. Perhaps with the best of intentions, um, although I'm not always convinced of that, but uh, nevertheless, a distraction it would be for the who are working um, uh, very hard uh, to then go through and we know of the government and we've already heard it today it might not have been contemplated by councillor martin but it's going to be a section 41 committee and that's going to mean this and this and this and there's going to be all this work involved. And really our ratepayers want us to get on with the job of finding savings so that we can keep the city financially sustainable and so that we can offer them uh, some form of relief and i know those packages are being worked on as well so um, a committee of a committee of a council is not how you deal with a crisis, not at all. Um, and that's why I can't be supporting this. Thank you. Um, Councillor Martin, I can actually just see you. I, I'm just making sure that, because if you disappear off the screen, we have to <clears throat> note that you're absent from the meeting. So, uh, Councillor Kouros, thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. The, the way I'm understanding this is that Councillor Martin wants to set up a committee of outside people to devise administration who are paid to do the job that they have, that live, eat and breathe what they do, who then advise us and that all of us are involved anyway to be able to vote on the decisions that are brought forward to us. So the way I'm seeing this is really, as Deputy Lord Mayor said, it's a committee of a committee of a committee to council. So I don't understand um, why we want to slow down a process on moving fast during a time of crisis when we've already got administration who already feed us all the information, they inform us regularly, we make the decisions. That's what you're elected to do. We're not elected to, you know, speak, have people come in to confuse the issue. You were elected to do this job. You know the finances. You know what, what is in, in play here. You know what decisions you, you need to make. Um, and it just make them. So um, to really to confuse the issue, um, it's not the right thing to do at this present moment. Um, we really need to work together collaboratively as a council um, and not create any more further confusion. Administration do provide us with information. They do do a very good job of that. And if you want to question that information, you can ask them to do that and they will provide it for you. Um, and that simply is where, the way to go forward in order to move forward through this fast through this crisis. I'm so sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. Um, I'm assuming Councillor Martin, you had a question, but I'm going to go to Councillor Kerr first because he hasn't spoken yet. I'll be super, I'll be super brief, thank you. Oh, Lord Mayor, look, um, I, I'm not persuaded uh, that this uh, extra level of bureaucracy is warranted. Um, I'm taking note of some of the, the, the comments from the other councillors, I think they're quite cogent. Uh, moreover, I don't see that the presentation and consideration of expert opinion from business and other stakeholders is currently disallowed. Uh, there are plenty of avenues for councillors to uh, to adduce uh, the, this uh, to, to adduce uh, submissions from third parties uh, in our current in our current structure. Um, so I, I don't see that that fundamental that seems to be the sort of linchpin of this amendment. Um, I, I don't see that that's not the case as it is already. So I'm, I'm not persuaded to uh, to vote for this amendment. Thank you, Councillor Kerra. Councillor Martin, you've already spoken. Is that a question? Oh, no, I just um, uh, wish to um, uh, clarify. Oh, I, there oh. seemed to be confusion, but I'll, I'll do the clarification and the summing up if you like. Okay, uh, you are the last one with a hand up. So I will, if there's no one else wish to speak, I will ask you to sum up. Yeah, look, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, I had hoped to bring this um, to um, Council in a bipartisan fashion, and I had sought a bipartisan response. I, I just draw everybody's attention to some of the responses and the language which has been used. 
and particularly in the context of complaints that somehow um, individuals, including me, who was accused directly of it, uh, impact on the culture of the organisation. And then Councillor Abrahimzada says, the proposal I brought to this meeting is like a brick to the face of the administration. Uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor says um, that he doubts um, uh, whether that I have brought this um, in a spirit of uh, um, um, bipartisanship. Um, and then uh, Councillor Kouros just doesn't understand, uh, which is not uncommon. Um, look, this is, this is a simple proposal that would bring to committee uh, uh, a I've range of... Hand up. It's summing up, I can't do it. Apologies, Councillor Martin, I haven't muted myself. Um, it is a simple proposal. It operated successfully in previous councils. It allows individuals, business and the like to come and speak to us. Now, you know, I hear that you're all happy just to have a meeting once a month and vote on things. Uh, I want to hear a range of views. I want to actually hear from people like Business SA. I actually want to hear from members of hospitality. I want to hear from others who've got views about how we respond. I want to know whether in fact, economists believe it's our best response to vigorously stimulate the economy directly through capital works programs, or whether they are, are better, uh, whether we are better um, uh, indirectly stimulating the economy through assisting ratepayers in whatever particular means. Um, I do not believe it is appropriate um, for a motion directing, uh, and I, I, I note this is a finance motion that was proposed recently, directing the administration to find $20 million in savings and bring it to us by our next meeting is not by any measure uh, a sensible, uh, let alone coherent response to this. We don't even know whether $20 million will be enough. Uh, and, and how is it that that's going to assist any of us to understand what, what the dimension of the problem is? Find $20 million. Well, I don't see how that works. I really don't. Uh, whereas the considered uh, approach, that is people having the opportunities to sit and talk for two, three, four hours, whatever it takes, uh, to hear the views of people who do understand what, what's going on, unlike Councillor Kouros, to hear from people who do understand would assist us greatly. Now, this being down along Team Adelaide lines, uh, and I note, that, I note that Team Adelaide will actually, in the end, bear responsibility for Council's response. Um, I take no part in it because I have no voice. Councillor Kouros, um, that was summing up, so... Unless a point of order. You may. Well, maybe, I don't even th think it's called a point of order, but just to clarify that Councillor Martin has put me twice in a very der derogatory comments when he cries victim each time. I just wanted to make that point. Okay. Um, members, uh, we will go to the vote. Uh, that is actually with your real hand up. Uh, those in favour? Those against? that is lost. I've got Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran? I'd like to call a division. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillors, a division has been called on the amendment. I'll call out your name and please state whether you are for or against it. I uh, 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 had to unmute everyone. Oh, my apologies. Councillor Singh. Yes, I support more oversight during this time. Just yes or no? Yes. Yes, I support the councillors actually leading the council, yes. Councillor, councillors, thank you. You know the pro, you actually understand the protocol. Just yes or no, thank you. For or against? Councillor Kira? Against. Councillor Martin? Aye. Uh, Councillor Ho? Against. Councillor Kanoff? Against. Deputy Lord Mayor? Aye. Councillor Abelinda Against. Councillor Bogan? For. 
Against. So we're just bringing the substantive back up onto the screen. Sorry, I, I thought I'd just lost my screen, but it's actually not there. Good. Ah. So, members, the substantive is one and two as per the report, and I will look for a mover. Councillor Moran, are you moving? No, we've... Sandy, that, it's not, it's not, three's not in it now. Uh, sorry, one moment. Sorry, I've got two people speaking. Just, sorry, one moment. And now, um, anyone who can't speak to it, I'm already spoken to it. So DLM's already spoken to it? Yep. And who else has spoken to it? I'm no, sorry? Councillor Martin, Martin and Councillor Sims have already spoken to it? Yeah, okay. Thank you. So um, apologies. And yes, Councillor Moran, the one before you is the one that we're now voting on. So now you have your hand up, so I'm going to unmute you and I can hear you. I'm not, I'm so disgusted with Team Adelaide for voting on block yet again, and I include Jessie Kerr in that, a, a stalwart member of the team. So I'm going to leave this meeting. I think it's disgrace. It once again is block voting, and uh, I think it should be reported to the local government. I'm not going to participate in this farce any longer. Councillor Moran is leaving the meeting. Uh, Councillor Sims, you have already spoken, so I'm just unmuting you. Just, just a moment. Um, it's not working again. Uh, ah, there, I've got you. Me, Mayor? I've got you. Sorry, just a, a procedural point of clarification. Uh, so I've spoken on uh, Councillor Martin's amendment, uh, but I cannot speak on the substantive. And is this the version that we are dealing with? Councillor Hyde's inclusion, or is this the original motion? Correct. This is actually what I was trying to get clarification. Yeah, That's sorry. I'm still saying, confused so. on that. Yeah, I'll just get Jenny to come back to everybody on that. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Count, Deputy, Lord Mayor Deputy Lord Mayor moved an alternate motion. And right. You seconded the amendment, so you were taken to have spoken to the motion. Uh, right, so I, I'm not allowed to speak on the substantive, this one now. Right. Okay. Sorry. Um, I, and Councillor Martin can't speak either because he moved the alternate. I had amendment. the amendment, sorry. Um, so, Councillor what? Martin, you have your hand up. I just don't understand why I can't speak, speak to the substantive. Uh, please remind me of the standing order that says I can't. Um, Sorry, I'll just get Jenny to refer to it for you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, standing order 239, a person who moves or seconds an amendment will have spoken to the motion. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, members, did anybody else want to speak to the motion? If uh, sorry, Councillor Kouros. Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I I just want to say that um, 
uh, going forward, this um, request that the Deputy Lord Mayor has added to the recommendation um, allows us to hopefully work more collaboratively together. Um, and um, I believe in the question, I think it was already answered before, but I just want to be 100% sure we do speak to um, uh, groups um, regularly with in council, correct? Do we have, this is a question for Claire, I suppose, um, is that we constantly speak to um, external groups advising council uh, or um, collaborating with council on certain issues, is that correct? There we go, sorry, thank you. Um, if, you're, if you're referring to our, um, where we get our um, expertise in terms of our finances um, obviously that's our audit committee who are paid and appointed to provide council with advice yeah. as we've talked in the past it's a, just advice so it's not necessarily decision making um, obviously the elected body is their decision makers um, in terms of sort of macroeconomic conditions um, and things that are you know um, potentially impacting the city or the state or Australia or globally um, we have a range of different mechanisms um, within which to um, get that advice um, and um, obviously we have staff here that track that for us and share that and um, we work very closely with groups such as business essay and um, you know, other relevant bodies who are best placed to speak on behalf of their um, stakeholders as well. So, um, you know, we do have formal mechanisms as well as informal mechanisms to make sure that the advice that the administration then provides through to council um, does consider um, a whole range of um, different stakeholders and implications. Oh, that's good. Well, that's good to know. So we're already doing that, that work already. So um, that um, clarifies that for me, thank you, Claire. Um, uh, yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm um, satisfied with that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Appleton today. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I um, uh, just wanted to say that uh, I do endorse uh, this motion to the, to the Chamber. Uh, and also, it's pathetic to see Phil's faction chuck tantrums. Councillor, uh, Councillor. We agree can with the rest of us. We'll stick to the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Martin, you had a question? Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, I wish to, to register that I have not thrown a tantrum and that the use of Sorry, the word- Sorry, Councillor, that was a question. You had a question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I, I'm, it's a, 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 a point of order. Um, accusing people of- Sorry, that's not a point of a, order. It's, it's, it's a point of clarification if you want to correct the record. Okay, it's a point of clarification, uh, Lord Mayor. Uh, well, I'm using the same standing orders that everybody else is, so I'm sorry, it is a point of clarification. Well, Lord Mayor, I'm just delighted uh, that you are using standing orders as you are. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, uh, the, the clarification I wish to make is that it truly is offensive to accuse people of a tan which is regarded as childlike behaviour. Um, I find it offensive. I know it's designed to be offensive, but it is part of the, uh, I guess, the assault on the culture of this organisation to have those kinds of words used constantly whenever somebody puts a point of view or puts a point of view very passionately. Uh, they're entitled to do so without being accused of throwing a tantrum. Thank you. I had um, Councillor Sims, I'm assuming this is a question. Yes, I'm sorry to labour the point, Lord Mayor, but everybody else who has spoken on the amendment has now spoken on the substantive. So I'm confused about that. I mean, I, I thought that you're able to speak to an amendment and when the substantive comes, you have an opportunity to also speak on that. Councillor Kouros, right. Councillor oh. Abbey speak spoken on both thank you councillor sims i will i have got governance with me so i will double check for you thank you thank you lord mayor it's only the mover and the seconder who have taken to have spoken to the motion that we had in front of us beforehand which was the um, alternate motion so okay thank you
Well, is my microphone is open? Are you asking me this? Councillor Kouros, I'm so sorry. I forgot to put my own microphone back on um, because I'm getting feedback whenever Jenny speaks. Uh, did you wish have a question? Um, I actually have a point of clarification. Can I do that? You may. A uh, point of clarification in regards to Councillor Martin. Um, you know, he's talking about other council councillors in this forum and during this uh, in regards to other councillors' behaviours. And he should take a lot of that in his own behaviour in pointing out that he has specifically always given me derogatory comments every time we speak and in a lot of this time we are in a crisis we have people that are suffering at the moment and we have people that are really needing us to show leadership and his behavior he should take his own behavior into account when he's pointing out others thank you thank you um, now members uh, i i'm not going to take any more questions i'm actually going to we are actually talking to the motion um, if nobody else is going to talk to the motion, then I will go to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Councillor Kira. Thanks. Yes. Um, look, I think um, this amendment, um, I think it's a sensible amendment. It, uh, it, uh, it crystallises, uh, what it does is crystallises the need to identify uh, savings. I don't think that the number 20 million, I think it's common sense that we may, uh, we'll, we'll be presented with options that... Uh, uh, around which we can tailor uh, what savings we may think is necessary is this is such a moving feast. But I think the intent of the, um, of the amendment is quite clear. Uh, it crystallises and it gives uh, greater agency to the councillors uh, in the uh, decision making around uh, what is needed to be done. I think it's a perfectly fine amendment. It does not take away from the, uh, from the initial uh, motion. I'll be supporting it. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Kira. So, uh, and Councillor Canole, because you didn't speak to the alternate motion. Councillor, Can I've just unmuted you. Okay, thank you. No, no, and again, I suppose uh, the reason for supporting this in the first place is that we have an administration that has been working with this so well, and, and uh, from the very moment uh, the issues began, they've been able to work through and, and certainly put together all the, uh, all the information and all, all the direction they need to be quick to quickly respond. All we're asking from them is to, is to uh, uh, really bring forward uh, all the different ways because a lot of the a lot of the ideas that they need to uh, uh, to uh, come you know to assist us to come out of this will be ones that'll have uh, ramifications whether it be through uh, uh, you know the, what we do to how we employ people and those conversations need to be open uh, within their organisations uh, as ideas. Um, the moment it comes out to us. Uh, it needs to be uh, already defined so that we are able to make a decision so we can make an decision. And you need that, uh, that breadth of, uh, of ideas, et cetera, so that you can formulate a very good and very uh, uh, all-encompassing response. Otherwise, uh, we are just going to have piecemeal type uh, outcomes that doesn't really address the complicated beast. And, and I really appreciate the efforts and all of the things that need to be considered and they need to be considered quietly yeah, in, in their confines so that uh, they're able to bring us some at least some uh, more uh, thought out uh, uh, outcomes that we can use and that we can we can assess on behalf of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Members, I'm going to go to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Deputy Lord Mayor. Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh, where to begin? Um, I suppose we want to talk about this 20 million figure. Um, uh, what I would say with that figure is <clears throat> options on how we can achieve that figure um, and actually give some flexibility if we need to achieve, as we as clarity on this matter grows, if we need to achieve more, we can consider more. Um, uh, uh, if it needs to be less, we can uh, say we'll take this and this option, but not that one and that one. But um, I, I would say when we're talking about this figure, it hasn't been plucked out of thin air. In actual fact, in actual fact, um, uh, it's very similar to the figure that Councillor Martin has referred to at the previous council meeting, at the council meeting before that, um, and at the council meeting before that one when it came through um, in one of our quarterly reports. So uh, this has not come out of thin air. Um, it is a very. It, it has been a public figure for some time, um, uh, and as has been released publicly today, there is clearly now very much an impetus on us uh, to ensure that we 
uh, looking at options to get our expenditure under control. That's what this does. Um, it, it is allowing us to work in the quickest way possible um, to achieve that because we need further clarity on our books and exactly where we're going uh, so that we can provide certainty to our businesses in the city who are suffering, which is we shouldn't be prevaricating um, with any subcommittees or what have you. And it's why um, our attendance at these meetings um, is very, very important. And, it, and it's a shame to say we are no longer at a full complement. Um, that's what this motion is all about. That's what this amendment is about. This is what the people are demanding. And when we want to talk about stakeholder engagement, oh, what was that? Hello? Oh. Uh, Alex, can you say something? No, I've lost you. I've lost you. Um, I'm going to mute myself. Um, Alex, hang on a sec, Alex. How's that? Yeah, that's better. Cool. Wow, I don't know what that was. I hope, I'm sorry if everybody got that feedback at the same time. Um, I'm just, I was just um, going to finish off Lord Mayor by uh, talking about stakeholder engagement, of course. Um, I think the city is very uh, engaged with its stakeholders, the administration are. Um, uh, if some councillors are not engaged with their critical stakeholders, especially over this period, well, that's a failing on their part and I would encourage them to go out um, and engage them uh, more and engage them further. Of course, we've got teams at council that do a community and stakeholder. So, um, I think we've covered all bases here now, Lord Mayor. It's a very common sense motion. It allows us to move forward quickly and to give the administration and the public clarity on exactly where we're going. Um, Councillor Martin, I can see you waving. Was that a point of clarification that you had? Uh, can you hear me, Lord Mayor? I can, I can. Yeah, I had some, we had some terrible feedback for a minute there. Um, I just wish to make clear, I did not mention $20 million in terms, at any previous meeting, in terms of our reducing our expenditure. I mentioned it as being the operating deficit which Council has uh, uh, pr provided to ratepayers since uh, uh, three years ago. Each year, $20 million in deficit. It has no relationship whatever to the current and substantially greater financial crisis in which we find ourselves. Thank you. Uh, members, we will now go to the vote uh, by the raising of a hand. Those in favour? That is carried. Oh, those against, my apologies, those against? That is carried. Uh, Councillor Martin. Division. Division. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. When I call out your name, please state whether you are for or against it. Councillor Sims. Oh, sorry, let me unmute you all again. Sorry about that. My apologies. Councillor Sims. Okay. Thank you. Against. Councillor Kira. For. Councillor Martin. Oh, absolutely against. Councillor Ho. For. Councillor Canole. <laughs> Deputy Lord Mayor. Aye. Councillor Abraham today. Or. And Councillor Donovan. Or. Councillor Kuros. Sorry. Thank you. Did you hear Councillor Kuros? Yes. Yeah, great. I'll just 